Hey guys, Will here. So certainly not a video that I'd intended to make when I woke up this morning, but uh, here we are. So uh, yeah, I just had a major failure with my RTX 4090 graphics card in the sim racing PC. You see it behind me there. Uh, I was running the uh, brand new F123 game for one of the very first times on the sim racing PC. And I paused the game, went upstairs to make some lunch, came back down maybe 10, 15 minutes later, uh, and I could immediately smell a burning smell. And I ran, I ran over to the PC straight away thinking it's gotta be something related to that. And uh, I saw some smoke coming out of the uh, 12 VH PWR connector on the 4090, immediately turned the system off, let everything cool down, pulled it apart. And uh, I'm gonna run you through exactly what I found now because our usage case here is a little bit different from what a lot of you guys would have seen. Now, I know a lot of you guys would have seen issues around this connector. Uh, there was a lot of reports of failures and melting connectors late last year when the cards first came out. I actually did a post on our community page on this very YouTube channel uh, talking about it and my, my take on what was going on at the time and warning you guys to keep an eye on it if you did own a 4090. Uh, so let's go over to the Sim Racing PC now and I'll talk you through exactly what's happened. So in case you're not familiar with the channel, this is my uh, crazy sim racing PC, which I'll run you through in just a minute. This is the sim racing rig that, ru that it runs. So um, triple 65 inch 4K displays and that, that allows us to make some really, really crazy point of view uh, footage using a helmet cam, a GoPro, which uh, I'll run some footage for you guys so you can see for yourselves what that looks like if it's your first time visiting this channel. But yeah, this is the sim racing PC that we built about, or probably about a year ago now, I, um, I finished the basic shell of it anyway. So. Two radiators up the top. We've got the main PC up the top here, which is responsible for running the, uh, the simulations. And then the bottom tier down here is uh, what's responsible for running all of my audio, video capture, uh, streaming and all that. So sim PC, streaming PC basically. So this is a 13900K with 64 gig of RAM. The bottom system is a old 8086K with a 2080 Ti graphics card and 32 gig of RAM, I think, which is overkill for what I'm using it for, but that's beside the point here. So you can see here, everything's water-cooled except my 4090. The reason I didn't water-cool water that card was because I was always nervous about something like this happening and I didn't want to have any warranty issues and I'm really glad that I didn't now. Now, as you can see, the card is actually running now and I've got a cable mod uh, connected there, which I actually bought back when I bought the card, uh, when I saw all these people were having issues, but I hadn't had any issues with the card. So I just kind of left the uh, original connector and not touched it. Now, as you can see, it is running. So I was able to uh, disconnect everything before it did any major damage to the connector there. Uh, I just wanted to see whether the card was completely dead. I have put it in for warranty replacement through Scorp Tech here in Australia, uh, who supplied me with the card. So hopefully we'll get that sorted out really quickly. But uh, up here, you can see this is the 12 VH PWR connector that was installed, the default one that comes with the card. And you can see the third pin from the right hand side there is pretty badly melted. That is one of the positive 12 volt rail pins on that connector. So just to run you through how I had this installed, it was basically installed exactly the same way as what I've got this cable installed now. So it was running up over the top of this guy and you can see that's got absolutely no tension on it whatsoever. It's completely loose up here. So there's nothing pulling the cables to the side or anything like that. And I had this one installed exactly the same way. It was this way around. And you can see there's a little bit of a lean on the cables there just from how it was naturally resting. But there was no, there was no tension or anything like that on the cables. It was certainly not bending it beyond its bend radius or anything like that. And it was just connected to some pigtails running through to the PSU behind the system. So, uh, yeah, it had been running like that. I literally, uh, we, moved, we moved the PC into our new studio uh, back in December last year, so six months ago now, and I literally hadn't touched the connector or the PC since we installed it all. So it wasn't like I was unplugging it, plugging it back in. It had literally only ever been plugged into the card one time. And the reason for that was because I was so anxious about the connector in the first place that I didn't want to touch it and play around with it. It was working, I never had an issue with it, and everything appeared to be fine. And even to the point where I was running a temporary probe on the connector itself for about three or four months when I first got the card, just to keep an eye on things and make sure that it didn't overheat. And yeah, I'd literally never, ever, ever had an issue with it the entire time that I'd been running the card. So I was a little bit puzzled as to what might have happened. Obviously, running triple 4K displays like what we have here is pretty taxing on the system, but I think I've gotten to the bottom of uh, why the failures occurred. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to quickly run you through this now because I think that what's happened is this was actually probably faulty 
all along and uh, it just never really reared its ugly head up until this point. Now just quickly, if you look at the connector as well, you can see it is only the one pin that's melted and I'll, I'll put some still images up here for you as well so you can see a little bit better, but the pin itself inside there isn't overly charred or discolored or anything like that. It's just like it's gotten hot. And uh, when I did when I did disconnect the connector, the reason why I was able to get it up and running again now is there wasn't any sort of residue or anything like that left behind inside the connector on the graphics card side. And um, the pin itself wasn't discolored or anything like that. So the card itself actually looked absolutely fine. Now I'm, I am, as I said, still gonna send it in for warranty just in case, uh, because you know, obviously once you've had something like this happen, you could have little micro fractures in the plastic. But if you have a look at the female pins inside that connector, you can see that they're actually split down the middle. So it kind of, it splays out from the center as the pin goes into that assembly. And you can imagine if there's any tension or if there isn't a perfectly uh, perfectly clean connection that's utilizing the entire surface area, then you're gonna end up with all the current running through a smaller area of the surface, and that is gonna create a hot spot and uh, lead to the issue that we've seen here. So let me run you through now why I think this has happened now rather than seven months ago when I got the card. I'm gonna load up Assetto Corsa Competizione, which is a game that I regularly play on this rig and have done for the last seven months. And let's have a look at what the power draw is sitting like. All right, so I'm gonna quickly start a typical kind of race session here. And let's have a look at the reported power draw. So sitting at around 325, 330 watts of total power draw there on the system. Now that's running 11,520 by 2160 resolution. So triple 4K resolution with the graphics pretty much maxed out. But I believe there must be some sort of uh, CPU bottlenecking going on here that's, uh, that's limiting the system so it's not taking full advantage of the graphics card here, which would be the only reason why it would be drawing that much power. So in all the usage that I've done with this card, across mostly iRacing and ACC and Automobile Listed 2. I've never ever seen the power draw. You saw it just spiked up there to about 350 watts when some cars drove past me. But um, yeah, I've never ever ever seen it go over about 350 watts. And I did spend quite a bit of time looking at this uh, when we first installed the car just to sort of see what was going on and what the power draw was like. But let me now load up F123 and show you what that power draw is like. All right, so we're loading up benchmark mode here. We'll see it launch into the session in just a second. And four hundred and ten, four hundred and twenty watts, four hundred and five watts. But the interesting thing here is, even if I even if I hit pause, which is what I did when I went up for lunch here, so you can see it is actually paused now. It's still sitting there under very, very, very heavy load at over 400 watts of power usage. So I'd say what's happened here is the issue's probably been present in this connector the entire time since day one. Maybe the pins were a little bit too splayed out and it just wasn't making a perfectly good connection. I've seen examples of other connectors where the thing's completely charred and melted. We were very lucky that we caught it this early, but yeah, it's, it's basically, this, is, this has been a, an accident waiting to happen for probably seven months now. And uh, as soon as I actually put a load this high through the graphics card for the first time, this was the result. So a couple of lessons in this for me, obviously initially I was very concerned and keeping a very close eye on things, making sure that we didn't have any problems going on, but I didn't account for the fact that a new game would come out that would push the graphics card a lot harder than what I'd seen before. And uh, obviously this was a uh, an accident just waiting to happen. And I was extremely lucky that I came back downstairs when I did. As I said, the game was still paused, the card was still running. And I think that's one of the really concerning things about these failures is that, you know, it's not necessarily a case so if it overheats and the car just shuts down immediately, uh, you know, you can actually get to the point where it could catch fire in the worst case scenario and still be running. And uh, you know, you, your house could end up burning down before you even realized. So uh, I was very lucky that I came back downstairs when I did. 
And uh, yeah, I guess this is to serve as a bit of a warning to you guys, uh, even though we're not seeing this reported in the media as much as we were six months ago, uh, it's certainly still a potential issue. I'd done everything right as far as I could tell. Obviously, I made absolutely certain that the connector was plugged in absolutely correctly and firmly and clicked into position. So there was absolutely unequivocally no issue in terms of how I'd actually installed the connector into the uh, receptacle on the 4090. Uh, I didn't have any excessive strain on the cable. It was literally just dangling loosely under the force of gravity and that's it. There was no pressure on the cable. It wasn't bent beyond its bend radius or anything like that. So that wasn't an issue either. And uh, yet here we are in this situation anyway. So uh, yeah, guys, keep an eye on your 4090s if you have one. So yeah, let me know in the comments below if you've had a similar failure on your 4090. And uh, yeah, I'll keep you guys posted on what transpires. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye.